And the obvious excitement can be when we do like have a, a pour and we're pouring metal and there's, there's that excitement that comes along with just kind of the magic of molten metal. It's, it, it's captivating. I manage the sculpture area here at UNCG, working as the technician. While I got my MFA, I transitioned into teaching and um, I've been here doing that ever since. <laughs> we chose to move our foundry outside um, and it's in a straight line with our bridge crane which travels from indoors to outdoors. We've poured metal in the snow three times that I can remember so the students working down here have the opportunity to learn really an endless variety of skills. I haven't worked in this type of material before, but that is part of the intrigue. And I came to UNCG to get every type of training I could possibly get. And this was one of the ones that I was most excited about. Once you're done packing the sand, you put it in the kiln and it melts out the wax. And then you have a hollow block of sand and you pour the hot metal into the sand on the vents and then it gets hard. You break away the sand, it's very difficult, so you use chisels and mallets and then a, a metal sculpture with all the vents and tubes are left and then that's when you take it into the foundry and cut off the vents, sand it down and, and make it pretty. There's a lot of teamwork. It's not one person can pick up 200 pounds of sand that has your sculpture in it, so you definitely had to work together to an end goal. I thought that I was a painter whenever I started school here, and then I took my foundations course and got to play around in the uh, shops, cutting wood and bending metal, and I just sort of fell in love with the whole making process. There's so much more to learn about waste molds or investment molds, vapo molds, and just different aspects, as well as different casting materials like aluminum and bronze. And I've recently started to learn about uh, plastic casting and resins and uh, roto casting. My favorite part of the process would be cracking my uh, metal out of the mold. It's like unwrapping a gift. It's you put a lot of time into making the wax right and then getting it sprued and vented and packed without breaking it and then you go through the excitement of pouring it but whenever you crack it out it's still too hot to touch. In a lot of other, especially in sculpture, there are other mediums that are slightly faster and slightly slower. In the uh, metal casting, it's a really good mix of both. Well, when we're melting the metal, it's very loud so much gas to power the furnace to achieve those temperatures. Uh, it's a lot of noise. So we're in that environment for an hour or two preparing to pour and then we turn it off and it gets completely quiet and we pull this pot of this magical liquid out that's all shimmery in these colors. It can be collaborative. It's also a lot of, we, we need to help each other down here. You know, part of sculpture is you're, you know, you always need a little bit of help at least, whether it's carrying something or someone help you hold something while you try to drill a hole in it, or it, it's hard to do it all by yourself. To me, like, making art, the exciting part is, is more about the discovery and when you're really exploring a new idea or something happens in your piece and you see that for the first time. You know, the process should lead you to the possibility that, you know, this could be even more than what I imagined yesterday or last week. Um, so seeing those shifts, seeing somebody make that discovery, 